Hello friends, let's talk about the comic making process. So this is just kind of how I do it, uh, the tools that I use and the steps that I take to go from a sketch to finished artwork. And we are going to be taking a look at Mage Hand, which is one of my more recent short stories. It's 14 pages and it's about a dude living in a city and uh well we'll see we will see so i'm not i'm this is just going to be basics i'm going to go through some of the some technical stuff but mostly broader steps of the process so step one sketches and layouts so this is kind of <laughs> this is the hardest part really taking a script taking the words on a page and drawing pictures to go with them figuring out where each word bubble will go how to structure a page where all the panels are what scenes to show what to leave out and just the entire flow of it and it's hard to explain because it's it just kind of comes with doing it for 10 years and at getting accidentally good at it you kind of get the intuitive of what shots to show what how, how zoomed in do you want to be on this certain frame but yeah this definitely is definitely the longest and the hardest part of the process at least for me I can spend a long time agonizing over the sizes of each panel how how to show each thing but once this part, once you really lock down this part, then everything else is just easy, really, at least for me. This is where all the hard work is. <laughs> oh, and I do want to mention how like grateful and happy I am when I finally found the, the very, it's so basic and it makes so much sense, but the nine panel basic layout, because it just really streamlines it for me so I don't have to <laughs> agonize over panel arrangement when I just start with a grid. I just, I have a basic template all set up, ready to go, and I can just change and resize panels to fit a page, but I always have something to start with rather than complete blank white page, and it, it helps, at least it helps me so much. And may, I may, you can argue that that makes my, um, page layouts less exciting than they could be if I really ignore any grid rules at all but it really works for me otherwise these pages would take me so much longer and wouldn't be as clean as I would like them to be so I'm happy with it but so all of this so far I'm doing everything in Photoshop I do all of the layouts and sketches and text in Photoshop I just find that Photoshop is really good. It, it's really, really good at text. You, you have a lot of control over your text. And it's really easy to set up panels. It's really quick. But I prefer to draw in Manga Studio. So once the text and layouts are done, I come in over to Manga Studio where I do the inks. Inking is my favorite part. It's where I have the most fun, it's where I can put some music on or listen to a podcast or something and just just go. So like a lot of people can see it as kind of the tedious part because you kind of, you, you've already drawn the picture, you have the sketches and now you're just tracing over them, where's the fun in that? But my sketches are very loose, let me go back, my sketches can be very loose. like. A lot of the work ends up happening, I know I just said all the work is in sketches, but a lot of the final cleaning up work is done in the inks. You can see where the how much the buildings changed, for example. But yeah, uh, not much else to say about the inking. Uh, oh, let me point out the brushes that I use. I use the Frendin brushes, which I think they were like $5, you you have to buy them. But I really like them, they work very well. Not that Manga Studio has bad brushes, they're actually really good. Which is the whole point of why I use Manga Studio for drawing. 
more than I use Photoshop nowadays because the brush system is just it's hard to explain without actually doing it but it just feels so much better than Photoshop does and even though the default brushes are really good, I really love these friend and brushes. Even, and even though I really only use uh, that Inker Nib Flexible is really the only one I end up using. But moving on, after inks, there's the full page. Uh, this is also usually the part where I draw in all the word bubbles. I don't always start with the word bubbles. I'll, um, because I end up moving the text around so much that I don't end always draw the word bubbles until this part. But now you can see that the page is practically done except for colors. Not much will change between this phase and the coloring phase. So step three, phase three of the process, coloring. So I will admit that I'm still, coloring isn't my favorite thing to do. And I think part of it is that my brain, I kind of understand the basics and fundamentals of color theory. Like what colors look good with other colors when you put two colors next to each other. But in practice, I get really tripped up over what color, what thing should be. Just choosing colors. I think it's kind of the infiniteness, if that's a word, of it. It's like, should it be this shade of green? Should it be a slightly more yellow green? Should it be a darker green, a lighter green? Should it be green at all? Should the trees be red? It's so, there's just so many choices. In, I guess I'm very indecisive <laughs> in that way. So what I started doing to kind of just make, make it easier on myself and to make it so I, again, so I don't spend hours and hours and hours on every page is I kind of just started being pretty flat especially with the backgrounds. I'll just use a couple colors and keep it simple. And then allow myself to be fancy with the shading. And shading, the way I do it is another thing that I'm so grateful that I discovered is layer styles in Photoshop. You take a layer above your coloring layer, set it to multiply, pick a nice, I use the purple most of the time, a very faint light purple and shade with that and it just works. You can see how I used a lot of airbrush especially for the backgrounds and for the characters themselves I just go back to my regular brush, just a regular little circle default Photoshop brush because I'm back in Photoshop again and then I'll do any special basic effects that I might need like the the glow on the hand, which is just another airbrush on its own layer. And coloring can actually go really fast for me, especially the way that I've kind of streamlined it for myself. And because I'm almost done, all of the pages are sketched, all of the pages are inked, now all I have to do is color. And I'm pumped to cross that finish line. So when I really get into full on color mode, I can really churn out these pages. And that's about it. There's not really any magic tricks. It's just a lot of work and knowing the process and doing it over and over and over and you'll accidentally get good at it, trust me. So let me talk a little, just a little, I'll go over the writing real quick because that could be its own video whole series is the writing. But the main thing I want to say is I wrote this script the original first draft Mage Hand script about like almost an entire year before I finally started drawing it. And there's two reasons for that is the first reason is I just I was busy and I just didn't have the time to start a, drawing a 14 page comic. I was, had other stuff going on. But the other reason is because I just wasn't really happy with the script yet. And that's kind of what I want to say is make sure you're also spending a lot of time on your scripts like the first draft is not ready no matter what it is no matter how happy you are with it at the time give it a day or two come back to it it needs more work no <laughs> no matter what it needs more work and that could be big changes that could be little changes for me uh Mei chan changed 
kind of a lot. I added a lot of scenes and I took out some scenes, which is always hard to do is to delete paragraphs and paragraphs and it just disappears. It's like that hard work disappears, but it, it doesn't. It goes back into it in different ways when you're writing the new scenes and finding out what's working and what's not working. And right up into the very end, I'm still making adjustments to the script. It's not until I'm making and doing the layouts for each page that the script is done. Like when I'm dropping the text into the word bubbles, I'm still changing the text. It could be if, because I just think the word bubble looks weird, so I'll change some of the letters so that the word bubble looks nicer. Or I just, when I see all the text next to each other, next to the facial expressions that of the characters that I've drawn, then I'll need, then I'll decide to change some words around to make them fit better. Or in some cases, I'm just still agonizing over, is this good enough? Especially the ending. The second to the last page, I think it was page 12 or 13, somewhere around there. I pretty drastically changed that page just because I was still not happy with the the way the conversation flowed. I actually changed a lot and it kind of changed the entire ending of the story. And I'm so glad I did that because it's so much better now. And I that was at the last second as I'm drawing those last pages. So just keep that in mind that the writing is, it's almost as if it's the sketch and layout process at the very start it's like step one you have to treat it as if you have to go over it over and over and over you start with the sketches and you refine it that's how it, that's kind of how I see writing in my head anyway <laughs> so that's it uh, I know I went kind of quick I probably didn't cover as much stuff as I even really intended to cover but there's just, there's so much you can talk about, you know? So this is just a basic process that I follow. And it keeps me from going insane and making these pages in a way that's like timely and I don't spend too long on it, but I spend long enough where I'm like still happy with how it looks. But yeah, maybe I'll do more of these. Maybe I'll go into more uh, in-depth detail on each step. Or we'll talk about something else. But in the meantime, if you didn't know, I do short cartoon animations over on Chainsaw Suit Original. You can check those out. And I have a Patreon where you can support my work and even get cool goodies in return. So, thanks for watching. Until next time.